Welcome to this lesson 9 that is called as lamb among wolf. I hope it's okay. I'm going to provoke you a little here. I'm going to challenge you and say something that will really make you think. I hope you are ready for that. We start to get a lot of feedback for my new book, The Call of Jesus. There was a person from Canada, he just wrote this about the book. Best book I've ever read beside the Bible. This book is a must read for everybody, especially the body of Christ. It's a wake up call that urgently needed in these last days. And we lead believers back to the first love with real joy and excitement in their walk with the Lord. So there was one he said here that it was the best book he have ever read beside the Bible. And I believe also when you read the book, the whole book, or move on in this video series with me, you will find it very, very good, very interesting. Why? Because especially in the end when we are going to put it all together. What we are doing now is we are taking it verse by verse, word for word, what Jesus is saying in Luke chapter 10. And then later we will put more meat on it, and later we will put it together and send you out with it. Send you out to live this life Jesus has for you. After Jesus said in the beginning of Luke 10 that the harvest is ready and the workers are few, then he said that we should pray the Lord of the harvest to send out workers, something we have been looking at. And then in Luke 10, verse 3, he says this, Go your way, behold, I send you out as lamb among wolves. This is what we are going to look at today. One of the first things he said there is go. Go your way. What you need to understand is that the harvest is ready. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is not the problem. The problem are the workers. And we looked at that last time that we should pray the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. But then he says this, go your way. Or say with other words, Go out in the harvest. Go out in the harvest. Why? Because the harvest is not going to come to us. Try to imagine a farmer. A farmer out in the real world who are standing there and looking at the harvest. And when he looks at the harvest, he sees that the harvest is huge. The harvest is plentiful and the harvest is ripe. The harvest is so ready, the harvest is so right, and he just feels that joy. What do he do? He opens the barn door, and then he looks over the harvest, and then this farmer, he will say, Harvest, come in. Come into the barn. And then he looks at the harvest, and he sees something interesting. He sees that the harvest don't come into the barn. So he starts to think, what is wrong with the harvest? Maybe the harvest don't hear me. Maybe I need to shout a little louder. Harvest! Harvest, come in! Harvest, the barn is ready! The barn is ready for you! Come in, harvest! And he shout louder. But still the harvest don't come in. So he starts to think, what is, what is wrong with that harvest? Why don't the harvest want to come into the barn? And then he look at the barn and he thinks, oh, now I know it. The barn is dirty. <laughs> the harvest don't want to come into a dirty barn. So he, he fix the barn up. He, he get all the dirt out and he even put a nice carpet on the barn floor. And, and he, he even put a coffee machine into the barn. And he fix it up and have light. And, and he make the barn so cozy. He also even put some very nice soft music in to the barn. So the barn is so amazing and so cozy. And then he go out and he look at the harvest and say, Harvest, come in! And the harvest still don't come in. Why? Because the harvest don't care how cozy the barn is. The harvest cannot stand up and come in. The harvest is not created to come into the barn. The only thing he actually get out of fixing the barn and make it so cozy and soft music and light and sofa and coffee machines is that now all the workers are sitting in there and don't want to go out. 
The only thing we really get out of fixing our churches is that it's so cozy and nice that no one wants to leave them. But you know, the people out there, the harvest, the sinners, they don't care how fine the churches are. <laughs> harvest are not created to stand up and go into the barn. No, the workers are created to stand up and go out in the harvest. And this is what we should have done in the churches. Instead of making nice churches and hope that the people will come into us, we should instead have been training and encrypting the workers to go out there. And again, I like to say, not go and stand on a platform in Africa. Just go out to that harvest that's just outside the door. To find the person of peace and go to their house and eat and drink what they serve and do everything I'm going to look at later in this book. I want to read here. Are we not doing exactly what the farmer did in our churches? We use a lot of time, money, resources to make our churches Barns look nice and cozy with beautiful carpet and light. We even play music to set the right atmosphere. We do all of this with the belief that if the churches are nice and cozy and the sermon is just right, the people will start to come into the church by themselves and get saved. And I would just want to say, this is what most people are doing. Yes, of course, you can see a little fruit of that. Of course, there is some people today, and mostly church people, who change one church to another and so on. But a sinner out there, yes, we see a little fruit, but I guarantee you, you see so much more fruit. Instead, if you start to train and equip workers to go out. Why? Let's say you have a church with 100 people. And you have a few people coming to here and there. But how often do you see a church with 100 people? And there's 100 one year and then 200 next year and then 400 and then 800 and then 600 and then 3200 and 6400. We don't see that. That is just 100% growth. That is just one person leading one to Christ per year. Why? Because most people in church, they never lead anyone to Christ. They are not equipped for it. They don't know what to do. They go, don't go out and do it. And this is what you are called to lead people to Christ. You're not called to just be in a church where other people do it. You are called to lead the harvest, the people to Christ. So what we are saying is that the harvest is not the problem. The harvest has never been a problem. The problem is us. The problem is you and me, but we can do something about it. And we need to start with obeying what Jesus has commanded us to. Let's move on and look at what Jesus also is saying in Luke 10. He said this, go your way, but then he continues, behold, I sent you out as lamb among wolf. I send you out a slam among wolf. I think we have read that so many times without really stopping up and thinking, what, 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 what is it, Jesus, you are saying? What are you saying here, Jesus? I send you out a slam among wolf. Try to imagine Jesus standing with a little, little lamb. I have a picture here with a little lamb in his arm. A lamb is very, very, very helpless. Me or ba. In Europe we say me. In America I think they say ba. But no matter if it's a me or ba, what happened? A uh, little me cannot uh, scare a wolf away. But Jesus take this little lamb and send them out among wolf. Try to imagine this. Try to imagine Jesus standing with a little lamb. <laughs> and then he see wolf out there. Whoa! Look at those wolf. Those wolf, they want to eat you. <laughs> they want to eat you. <laughs> and then he take this little lamb and then he say, out with you. I send you out as lamb among wolf. What can a lamb do? A lamb is, as I said, very helpless. That bah is not going to lead the wolf away. 
A lamb is not very good camouflage, is it? No. It cannot climb trees. No, it's not very fast. No, a lamb is actually very, very, very helpless. And I think that's why Jesus chose that picture. A lamb is actually one of those only animals we really see who need a shepherd. A cat don't need a shepherd. It's very fast. A dog don't need a shepherd. It can barb and have teeth and so on. And snake don't need a shepherd. A bird can fly away. Don't need a shepherd. But a lamb need a shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd. What good shepherd in his right mind will do what Jesus is doing? Sending the little, little lamb out among wolf. There is only one shepherd who will do that, who will send his sweet lamb among wolf. And that is the good shepherd Jesus. And that is the shepherd who goes with the lamb. And this is what he is doing. He is sending us out among wolf. But he is not staying behind waiting while the wolf is coming and eating us. He said, go, behold, I send you out a lamb among wolf. And then he goes with us. And this is first what you want to experience when you step out there. You can feel like a little ma lamb, <laughs> I'm afraid. But when you go, you will experience that he is with you. Go out there among wolf. You know, the wolf is a, it could be a picture of everything uh, that they are trying to create fairness. But the truth is, it's not easy out there. It's not easy. And he has never promised it to be easy. He has said that we will experience persecution. He has said that people will speak against us. He has said that people will even beat some of us, throw us to jail and kill us. He had not promised us that it will be easy, but he had promised us that he will go with us. Many shepherds today in the church, they do the opposite of what Jesus They keep the lamb away from the wolf. They're like, as soon as somebody gets safe, no, 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 come in, come in here in the fine church. And, oh, don't go out there. And when people start to go out, be careful, be careful. There's wolf out there that want to eat you. Be back here. And we keep people away from the wolf. But it's out there where the harvest is. And we need to be out there in the harvest. And we should not keep people away from the wolf. Because the wolf is there, but Jesus is also there. Jesus is going with us. And this is what we need to learn. I want to read more from my book here. So do not be afraid. Take the first step and you will see that Jesus is with you. Jesus' word to you and me is Go. We should go out as lamb among wolf. He did not say stay here because there's wolf out there. No, he said go. Yes, there are wolf out there and they will never disappear. They are there to put fear in you. And that is just how it is. Remember the next time you are going to take a step and go to somebody and open your mouth to speak about Jesus with people you know or do not know. You might feel the fear is coming. You might feel like a little lamb that just wants to say bah while your legs are shaking like a little newborn lamb trying to take the first small step. But then remember Jesus' word. And instead of saying bah, say amen, knowing that Jesus is going with you. Then boldly take the first step in faith. What we read here is not just words. What Jesus has said is real. He is sending us out as lamb among wolf. And yes, we will feel fear. The fear is there. The fear is never going to disappear completely. It's, it's not going to disappear. If not disappeared in my life. But I have experienced now so many times when I as a little lamb, bah, Take the first step <laughs> and go out there and experience that, whoa, it went good. Whoa, Jesus was with me. Whoa, in that moment I took that step, in that moment I opened my mouth, in that moment I lay hands on people. When I was out there, it was not so bad as I feared. Jesus gave me strength. Jesus was with me. <sighs> I will never forget that. And then, yes, you forget it a little to next time. 
But still you remember a little of it. And you remember, hey, he was with me last time, he'll be with me this time. And the next time he was with me last time, and the time before he was be with me this time. And the next time he was with me there, 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 he was be with me there. So the fear will never disappear, but you will remember by experience that he is with you. And therefore it becomes easier and easier and easier and easier. So I really want to encourage you out there and say, don't be afraid. Go. Jesus did not say this, we read here, for us only to read about it, to pray about it, to memorize it, to even learn it in Greek and Hebrew. He, he is teaching the words to us for us to obey it, for you to obey it. And can I be a little harsh now? Can I provoke you a little? Don't be deceived. Do not be one of those we read about in the Bible who calls on Jesus and calls him Lord, Lord. But what Jesus one day will say, why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you do not do what I say? You know from the last time and for the teaching we have seen on to now that it's, it's not about our church way, it's not about how to mission out of the church box is about Christ, Christ and Christ alone and what he has called us to and we are his disciples. We have looked at how the harvest is ready. The harvest is really, really ready and plentiful. And we need to pray the Lord of the heart to send our workers, but then we need to go our, ourselves. And I encourage you to keep praying. Keep praying every day for the Lord to send out more workers, but I also encourage you to start to go. Go. Take the first step. And now again, we are not talking about that you need to go to Africa and stand on a platform or you had to stand in a church with a mic in a hand. It's just look around you. Where is the people around you who need Jesus? Where is the people you can share Jesus with? And especially this time with the end times, with the crazy time we're living in with all the fear and virus and all of this, it's really time for the church to rise up and shine, to open the mouth, to be bold. Don't say pay or may. See, amen, amen. I believe in Jesus' word. Yes, I feel like a little lamb, but I will go out. I will act on Jesus' word and I will in invite my neighbors over and sit with them and share the gospel. I will take this video with the gospel and share with them. That can be the first start for you. I will go public on Facebook and proclaim Jesus. I don't know where you start. But this is what I encourage you to do. Remember the picture of Jesus, the lamb and the wolf. Yes, you will feel fear. But on to next time, I really, really encourage you, take some steps. Do something you have not done before when it comes to share Jesus, when it comes to open your mouth. I remember First time I should pray loud, that was a big step for me. I remember first time I should open my mouth and talk about Jesus to somebody I did not know. It was a big step for me. I remember first time I don't, don't, don't have done anything. <laughs> Why? Because all beginning is difficult. And especially when we talk about sharing about Jesus. But I also saw that when I opened my mouth and shared about Jesus, Hallelujah, he was with me. And it, it encouraged me and I grew from there and I saw what Jesus is saying, the harvest is truly ready, truly plentiful. So on to next time, keep praying that the workers will be sent out to the harvest, but also take a step in faith. Do something you have not done before. Share Jesus with somebody. Do something you have not done before and see that he is with you. See you next time. Bye-bye.